Katie phoned to say that your dad wasn't feeling very good. There's nothing wrong with him. Oh? Do you mind if I have a quick word? He's out with cows. You've had a wasted journey. What did you go and do that for? We don't need no one. We can look after him ourselves. Sorry, can I use your phone to ring the surgery? It's on dresser. Thank you. Hello there. They must have already gone. Thanks, anyway. Isn't this your dad's coat? David, I know things haven't gone exactly to plan in the last few weeks. In fact, it's been an absolute disaster. But I've been doing some thinking. And, you know, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Have you dragged me out in the rain just to tell me that? David, that was a mere shower. Right. What do you want me to do with that, lad? Ooh. Take the pointed end... ..stick it in the ground... And you give it a whack. Well, what's it pointing at? The new route to my early retirement, with a bit of luck. How long has he been dead? A couple of days, at least, I'd say. Any idea of the cause? Coronary, most likely. He'd had a scare once before. How the kids taken it? The two youngest hadn't even realised he'd died. What? Meg just told them that he was poorly and shouldn't be disturbed. Why would she do that? Well, what am I meant to be looking at? The foundation of my new business empire, David. Eh? Hey? Got it off Toppy Wilson for an absolute song. <laughs> But it's a field. To the untrained eye, maybe. But to the keen entrepreneurial mind, this field represents a golden opportunity. For what? A caravan site. Hey? Well, look around. People in the city to give their eye teeth for a vista like this. Who needs the cost of whatever when you've got all this natural beauty right here on your own doorstep? Mass tourism is upon us, David, and the caravan is leading the way. Who knows, in a couple of years, we could be up there with Billy Butlin. Oh. Do you know, I reckon we could get 50 caravans in here at a pinch. If we packed them in nice and tight. Is there anyone we can phone? Relatives? Is there anyone you can stay with? We're staying here. In cases like yours, there are people who can help. I'm not letting welfare take them. I knew this would happen. Oh. Say please. Say please. Ah, good girl. Good girl. Who's this then? Oh, I found her abandoned outside the police station this morning. No collar, no nothing. So she's taking a shine to you. Unfortunately, Mrs. Ventress is allergic. 
The only time a neighbour's dog got into the house, she was sneezing like a locomotive. She put her back out as a result. It was in traction for weeks. Most distressing it was. Well, it's not staying in here. You can go in a kennel in the yard. This isn't an animal sanctuary, understood? Oh, don't you worry, Sarge. I'll soon find a good home for this one. Oh, well, the sooner the better. Stand by your beds, David. We're in business. <laughs> Are you open? We most certainly are, ladies. A pound a night, all inclusive. <laughs> Thank you very much. Where's kind of you? Not at all. Have you come far? Actually, we're touring the country. Compiling a caravaner's guide of all the sights. Really? Well, I sincerely hope ours meets with your approval. We're ideally situated for a wide range of tourist attractions. We passed one or two interesting-looking houses on the way in. If it's architecture you're interested in, Ashfordley Hall is not too far away, and there are one or two other substantial properties in the area. Mostly old money, of course. How interesting. Thank you. You've been most helpful. A pleasure. Park wherever you like. Oh, Vernon, look. Oh, 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 oh. They're pouring in despite the weather, David. Thanks. Hello, oh, Steve. What's all this in head of then? It's for the Barnwell kids. I reckon we owe it to Walter to make sure they're all right, don't you? I was up there again this morning. They're finding it a struggle. Yeah, I can imagine. Thanks. Meg apparently sent Peter Sampson from Welfare packing. She gave him a right earful. That won't have done her any favours. They won't be able to stay up there, that's for sure. It's their home. They'd be better off somewhere where they can be taken care of properly. Well, uh, Meg won't agree to that. She won't have much choice. Not if the court thinks they ought to be in care. Aidensfield is their home. Everything they know is here. Hey, Elf. What you got there, then? Got yourself a new drinking companion? Oh, I couldn't leave her whining in the police yard all night, annoying the neighbours. <laughs> Bye, please, Jeannie. Oh. Aren't you a lovely fella? Oh, Mrs Ventress obviously thought so some time ago. Otherwise, she wouldn't have married me. <laughs> Not you. He's gorgeous, aren't you? He's a she. And if someone doesn't claim her, I've got seven days to find her a home. She'd be a good guard dog for this place. Oh, no. She looks too much like a little softy to me. <laughs> She's too young for that kind of responsibility. Meg's had to grow up fast. I think with the right support, she could look after Robert and Casey. Well, the farm is all they've ever known, and that's where they belong. I think the worst thing that could happen is that they're shunted from pillar to post. With your background, I thought you of all people would understand that. She's right, you know, Steve. Noise. 
What's gonna happen to us, Meg? Just close your eyes and get some sleep. Well, from the description, it's pretty clear who it was. Point is, however sorry I feel for the lad, and I do genuinely, I can't have him upsetting the pointers. It's bad for business. I'll have a word with him. He can count himself lucky they don't want to pursue the matter. Most magnanimous of them, if you ask me. If there's anything I can do. Pull her back, Robert. Go on, get out of there, you stupid beggar. Go on, M Star. I just used to go in for Dad. Can I help? No. Raising those three kids on his own. Before Maureen died, the only thing he'd bottle fed was a lamb. He did a fine job keeping that family together. He certainly did, Bernie. A remarkable man. What do you reckon will happen to them now? Well, uh, Meg's an adult in the eyes of the law, so if the court deems her responsible enough, she could be made legal guardian. And if not? That doesn't bear thinking about Bernie. If they get split up, it would finish them off, I reckon. Yes, we're trying to contact the owners. Ta-ta. Bye. Morning, Sarge. Morning. Problem? Cows. Looks like they've escaped from one of Walter's fields. I'm just on my way up there now to have a word with young Robert. I'll let them know. What time is the funeral? Not till this afternoon. If this is any indication how they're going to run that farm, I'm not sure it's such a good idea. When was this? It's too much for the girl. Probably just another rambler All leaving right. the gates open. We'll get someone we'll out there see. straight away. Right. More bovine complaints? Uh, no. Dick Arnold reported a burglary at Scroggs Howe. Right. Bellamy? Better go over there. And I want a home phone for that dog, and this time tomorrow. What were you thinking? Don't know. Do you want to end up in a home? No. If you carry on like this, the magistrates will assume you can't be trusted on your own. It's up to you. It's these two you'll be letting down. Sorry. Oh, I'm nearly finished. Oh, Mr. Vernon's going to turn the pump on in a minute. What pump? The water is heated, isn't it? Well, yeah, it, it, it does get quite warm. Now let's see if it's true. Everybody has a summer holiday. Doing things they always wanted to. So we're going on.
This is how he got in. Through here. Mr Arnold? Mm hmm Any idea what time this happened? Last night, about two o'clock. I heard a noise, came downstairs and I found this. Carriage clock, canteen of cutlery, small stuff mainly. All gone. Oh, and uh, £20 in cash from the sideboard. Don't suppose you saw anything? As a matter of fact, I did. From the bedroom window. Couldn't give us a description, could you? Oh, I can do better than that. I can give you a name. Ladies, please! Unreserved apologies. The uh, filter slipped off the pump, hence our amphibious friend. It's not good enough, is it, Phyllis? I assure you it will not happen again. I should hope not. I, I trust you won't need to mention this in the, uh, in the guidebook. We'll have to see about that. I oh, fixed it. What did they say? From now on, everything must run like clockwork. Otherwise, our name will be Mod. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all ever. When you're on the street, when evening falls so Time of date's been set for the hearing. It's a waste of time. I've already made up the minds. Well, not necessarily, Meg. It's up to you to persuade them otherwise. And you, you can, you know, I'm sure of it. And so many people around here are your friends and on your side. Besides, I promised your dad if anything happened to him, I'd look out for you. And I intend to keep that promise. Where's Robert? Ashford Police Station. Uh, when was this? Right. We'll get someone out to you straight away. Bye. Sarge! Another break in. Where? Aidensfield, just behind the church. When? Carbon copy. Forced entry on the ground floor. Small items taken. Cash. Bronze statue. I put money on it was the same person. And I reckon I know who that person was as well. Oh? The Barnwell lad. What makes you say that? Well, Mr Arnold said he saw him running away from the house. Bit out of his league, I'd have thought. Apart from the incident at the caravan site, he's not been in trouble before, has he? Yeah, not to my knowledge, no. When did this latest burglary take place, anyway? After the service. I can't see it myself. He promised me he'd keep his nose clean. Who did? Phil wants to interview Robert Barnwell over the break-ins. I'm just not convinced it's such a wise idea, or even necessary given the circumstances. Well, what evidence do you have against him? Well, he was seen in the vicinity at the time of the first break-in at the Arnold place, and we know he's capable of stealing. Biscuits and sausages, yes, but it's hardly the same. I just think we should tread carefully, Sarge. Those kids are having a rough time. Ashford Lee Police Station. All right, then, Crane, why didn't you talk to him? Oh, hello, mate. Word of caution, though. Yeah, yes, he's Doesn't busy. do it to get personally involved. All right. Uh, Steve, it's Meg Barmel on the phone. She insists she'll only speak with you.
minor hiccup, David. That's all it was. Norma and Phyllis are fine now. I've butted them up. Do you know something? I truly believe that this campsite is going to put the script's name firmly back on the map. I can feel it in my water. <laughs> Here we go. More coffers for the pension fund. Welcome to Elysian Fields, luxury caravan. Luxury, my foot. This site is overrun with sheep. Ah, um, a minor fencing problem, I should think. <laughs> uh, Mr. Stockwell will come and deal with it straight away. Uh, David? We found one trapped in our caravan. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, David will sort it out. Oh, be quick about it. It's eating our soft furnishings. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Gina asked me to drop these off for you. Just a few things to keep you going. I see. You better come in. I'll give you some money. I'm sure she's not expecting any. We don't want charity. Dr. Merrick, sorry to intrude. Be yeah, not. Tea? Thank you. You'd be relieved to know I've just seen Robert in White Woods. Did he look all right? I think so. It's difficult to tell. He ran off before I got to him. Oh, silly boy. I'm sure he doesn't realise the trouble he's caused. I just thought I'd better ring you. I wasn't unlike him at his age. You? Well, I was a right handful. For a while, anyway. Till my father knocked me into shape. I find that very hard to believe. I probably inherited it from my free-spirited mother. He's only trying to help, you know. He's just going about it a funny way. I know. It were him who let cows out. He so wouldn't have to milk him anymore. Maybe you should get someone in to help. Look, I know what you're thinking, but I can do it on my own. It just takes a bit of getting used to, that's all. It'd be one less thing to have to worry about. We're all right as we are. We don't need no one interfering. Right, thank you, ladies and gents. Now, before we conclude this evening, is there anything else you would like me to raise in next week's parish council meeting? Dick. Yes, how long are those Barnwell children going to remain unsupervised up at the farm? Yes. Now, I was broken into on Tuesday. Doesn't take a genius to put two and two together. Well, with the greatest respect, Dick, in this case you've made five, the court will be deciding their future in a matter of days. Personally, I hope they see fit to leave them where they are. In the meantime, however, what they need most of all is our support. I hope that answers your question. Anything else? Where have you been? What does he want? What have you done to your hand? Nothing. Let's have a look. How did you do this? If you hadn't been out all night, Dr Merrick could have seen to it. It needs cleaning. It's all right. Don't worry. You're not necessarily in any trouble. Then why are you here? Robert, there's been a number of break-ins in the village. And you think it's me? No. But there are those that do. So where were you this afternoon? Just kicking about in the woods. Was anyone with you? No. That hand looks nasty. Look a septic if he's left like that. You best get him to the surgery first thing tomorrow.
right, all right, I'm coming. Who can that be? I don't know, but it better be important. I was halfway through a Caribbean cruise. <laughs> have blown now. Kaput! We were wondering what you intend to do about it. Oh. Right. Well, it's not infected. I want you to keep it nice and dry, OK? How long have you had this? Well, while you were up at the farm last night, our elusive burglar struck again. When? Around 7.30, so at least that puts young Robert in the clear. He was with you, I take it. Not exactly. What do you mean? He didn't get back till gone half eight. But it's not him, Sarge. I'm certain of it. Well, where was he? In the woods, apparently. Alibis? No. In which case, he's still in the frame. I think he's innocent. You've only his word for that. With respect, Sarge, I think it's time I spoke with but him. Bellamy's quite right. You're too close. Let him handle it now. I think it would be advisable if you stayed away from that farm for a while. Like a pack of savage animals, they were baying for blood. Did that toppy fellow not mention the dodgy drainage, then? Must have slipped his mind. Point is, we're going to do something to raise morale, otherwise we're going to have a full-blown riot on our hands. We? I wonder what Billy Butlin would do in my shoes. Pass us that spanner, would you? You're not bothered, are you? In a word, no. Especially after last night's little episode. Oh, there's a, there's a bloke here who says he talks to his trees. He reckons it helps his apples grow. <laughs> it sounds about as daft as you, talking to that useless dummy you used to have. What's his name? Copperthwaite. No, the ventriloquist dummy you used to have. Oh, Enoch. Well, he wasn't useless. He was my friend. What ever happened to him? You ran over him in your truck. So, why did you go to the woods? We've been through all this with Constable Crane. Yeah, and I'd like to go through it again. Why does everyone think I'm lying? Well, I don't know what to think. You've hardly said a word so far. So let's start at the beginning, shall we? Where did you go to after the funeral? Just walked. Where to? Dunno. Merton's adamant I shouldn't get involved. Well, I think it's exactly what you should be doing, as Community Youth Involvement Officer. I know. Thing is, Meg's asked me to be a character witness. Well, Merton can't do anything about that. If the court summons you, you've got to go. Well, he's not going to be over the moon, though, is he? Well. Evening, Alf. Oh, you look shattered. You have no idea what it was like last night. Oh, Mrs Ventress was spluttering and wheezing. I only let the dog into the front porch. <laughs> I never thought she'd notice. Still no takers, then? <laughs> no. You need to find an old boy that needs some company. Don't you look at me. Oh, and it'll be someone to curl up with on them long winter nights, Oscar. If I can't have Shirley Bassey, I'll settle for a nice hot water bottle. Thank you. Oh, I just don't want to. Why not? Listen, David, unless we cheer this lot up ASAP, we can kiss goodbye to our retirement fund. You and Enoch could be the answer. Put on a bit of a show. Besides, it can't be much of a life for him, stuffed at the back of that wardrobe in the dark. Imagine him on the Riviera, stretched out in a deck chair, his little varnished cheeks glowing in the sunshine. <laughs> Come on, at least see what Enoch has to say about it. For once in my life, I have someone who needs me. Someone I needed so long For once unafraid 
I can go where life leads me And somehow I know I'll be strong For once I can touch What my heart used to dream of Long before I... Hello, David. Liz. Have you got a minute? Yeah, sure, come in. Thank you. What's up? Meg brought Robert into the surgery to see me today, about his hand. Yeah, she said she would. How is he? Fine. It's just that while he was in, I noticed something else. What? Scabies. And from the looks of it, he's had it a while. Meg and Katie have it as well. I just don't know how I didn't notice it before. Well, it's not your fault. You can't blame yourself. The welfare department are going to love this. I can just hear them. How can these children hope to run a farm if they can't even look after their own personal hygiene? What do you mean? <sighs> Nothing. Like you said, it's one hell of a responsibility. Perhaps Meg's not old enough for all of this. Hang on a minute. I was a sceptical one, remember? You convinced me. I know, and now I don't know what to think. What happens if they bring it up in court tomorrow? I can hardly lie and say everything's fine now, can I? No. So what am I supposed to do? But I'm strong! Strong enough to... Hey, Robert, come here. After your child. That's better. He ain't heavy. My brother So on we go Listen to the questions carefully. Speak clearly. And whatever you do, don't lose your rag. Everything will be fine. This way, please. Here we go. to start off with something a bit simpler than that. How's it going? Murderer! <laughs> Look, I've told you that was just an accident. Quite the little comedian, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am now, thanks to you. You want to be locked up for what you did to me? Yes, well, curtain up in five minutes. Break a leg, as they say. Or maybe not in your case. Oh, Mr Vernon. I'm not sure about this. You'll be fine. There's a chemistry between you two. The audience will see it immediately. You'll be a sensation. Having visited the farm on several occasions, I found rotting food on the side and evidence of vermin. I put bait down. Thank you. You'll have a chance to speak later. Carry on, Mr Sampson. She clearly can't cope on her own, which is why the welfare department strongly recommend the two minors be placed in care with immediate effect. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for, 
I want you to put your hands together and give a very warm welcome to that master of ventriloquism, David and his good friend, Enoch. Come on. He won't. What do you mean he won't? Make him. Just a minute, folks. <laughs> I understand the children have scabies. That's right. An infestation of mites. It can happen in the cleanest of families. Shouldn't they have come to you sooner, given the severity of their condition? It would have been advisable, yes. How long would you say they've been infected? It would be difficult to say. When was the last time you saw a case as severe? S some people are just embarrassed about telling their doctor. People assume it's from a lack of hygiene. Meg was probably afraid I might judge her. I repeat, when did you last see a case as severe? Never. Thank you. Delta Alpha 2-4, come in, please. Good advice, guys. PC Crane. Yes, Sarge. As soon as I've finished in court. It's on my way back. We'll make it quick. Don't want this getting out of hand. Understood, Sarge. Out. So sorry. PC Crane. We've just about given up on you. Oh, for heaven's sake, David. Look, you do owe it to him. He's just a lump of wood. <gasps> all right, all right. I'm sorry. Say it like you mean it. What? Go on. I am very sorry, Enoch. Now, can we get on with it? We're living on borrowed time as it is. So what's your impression of Margaret Barnwell? Honest. Trustworthy. She tried to hide her father's death from her own two siblings. She was frightened. It seems to me that Margaret's response to a crisis is to ignore it and hope that it goes away. I don't think that's quite fair. Isn't it? She admits her mistakes. The last thing these children need right now is more upheaval. Meg knows that better than anyone. They've had enough distress recently to last them a lifetime. What they need is stability. To be surrounded by people they know, friends, not strangers. And not to be shunted from pillar to post. Sorry about the delay, folks. A slight technical hitch. Mr. Scripps? If you'd like to take a seat, the show is about to start. Oh, no, it's not. Cynthia Pilkington, planning department. Ah. Following numerous complaints, I've been instructed to serve you a notice to clear this field within 24 hours or face prosecution. What? <laughs> What time was this? Right. right, we'll get someone round there straight away. Another break in. Catershall Lane, forced entry on the ground floor. Well, bang goes your feeling. Young Roberts in court this morning. So, what are you waiting for? Better go over there. Yes, Sarge. I wonder how they're getting on. Is your four legged friend not with you today? Oh. Success at last, Sarge. Irene Tattersall fell in love with her at first sight. I took her around last night. Oh, good. At least that's one happy ending. You okay? I couldn't bear it in there any longer. 
Have they decided yet? Still deliberating. He twisted everything I said. It's just as well you arrived when you did, or they wouldn't have stood a chance. You spoke very well. It was the truth. You were right, you know, in the pub the other night. With Dad being in the army, I spent the first 20 years of my life moving here, there, and everywhere. I've always envied people able to put down roofs. Well, they've uh, issued a fit person's order. Oh, what does that mean? Well, that means they can stay at the farm, providing I pop in from time to time and keep an eye on them. And they take on an experienced stockman to look after those cows. That's wonderful. Yes, despite one or two lapses of judgment, they thought that our Megia was a responsible character. <laughs> I second that. Thanks, all of you, for everything. Come on, I'll take you home. The best things in life are free, but you can give it to the best and please. I need more Your love, it don't pay my bills, I need money. Yeah, that's what I want. Excuse me, Mr. Scripps, would you mind? Uh, David! Why the mass exodus? Ask Enoch over there. A site like this requires planning consent, which you don't have. All right. Thank you, David. Hang on a minute, ladies. We'll put some wood underneath the wheels. No, thank you. Ladies, then switch off your engine and give me the keys, please. I knew we should have left last night. Yes, and for once I wish I'd listened to you. Delta Alpha 2-4 to control. Go ahead, speed. Alf, I'm at the caravan site. There's something here I think Phil ought to see. Is there a problem? Not anymore. To the Barnwell kids. Cheers. Cheers. Phil. We need to talk. Phil! Nice of you to join us. Point? Uh, yeah. Somebody looks in a good mood. Congratulations on the Barnwell case. Obviously, your lucky day. Looks like it. I, uh, I owe you an apology. What for? Ignoring good advice. I don't blame you. It was only a hunch. No hard feelings, then? Of course not. Well, according to Division, they've been at it a while, travelling round the country, breaking and entering wherever they went. Their caravan was like an Aladdin's cave, hundreds of pounds worth of stuff. Ooh. Cheers, anyway. Oh, I thought you got rid of it. Oh, didn't get on with the budgie, apparently. Irene woke up this morning and found feathers all over the front room. So, are you still looking for a home for it? Why? Do you know of one? Look me up, look me down. Rainbow. Happy, Katie! You were fun to have around. 
There you go, Robert. <laughs> Can she stay with us? Don't see why not. Oh, I'll drop a line and I thought this is such good news, I'll surprise you in person. How can a man who's been chauffeured around go back to driving a taxi? I just resent having the biggest decision in my life decided by regulations. Get out of the way! This won't solve anything for you.